prepare yourselves for a battle of epic proportions between two titans. Feast upon their voices and revel in their words. This is Dueling Ogres. And welcome to episode 108. Thank you for joining us as always on this well bonded Tuesday evening, Earth date March 21st, 2017. I'm your host, Remington Hitchcock. With me as always is my co host. What, what is it they call you? There are some who call me Tim. Hi, Tim. How you doing today? Good. My name's not really Tim. I'm Brandon. Oh, Brandon. I'm lovable scamp Brandon, your host, oh, your co-host. Oh, oh. But someday I will be the real oh. host. So just a, as a reminder, why are we calling Brandon different names again? I don't know. Brandon posted a status on his Facebook that said that he wanted uh, different nicknames. Yeah, was I it? needed new nicknames. Yeah. I was hoping for something like Iceman or, you know, Cheddar. Well, no, I mean, nothing can be as good as Diamond Man, so... Mm. <laughs> which you've never you never I've never, never really diamond latched on to no. no you were never a big fan of diamond man not really as as a nickname I yeah mean, you're okay with i like the person do not like the moniker right so i mean i don't know you're missing you're hard you know constantly, yes i am <laughs> constantly hard uh-huh you know harder harder than other things in fact yeah I can rub up against other things, and I will scratch them first. Well, you can't because you're not the Diamond Man. Stephen Hines is the Diamond Man. Yeah, so you're not you're not cool enough to be a Diamond. Yeah, I'm super. You're not a Diamond up. in the Rough. A Diamond in the Rough. Aladdin reference. Aladdin. Solid Aladdin reference. Timely. Forty five seconds in. Timely Aladdin reference. At least there's nobody gay in Aladdin, huh? Yeah, I'll tell you. We're just so what about that? Gonna jump right into that. Yeah, okay. Let's do it. You're gonna, oh, but anyway, um, you're gonna you, bring this shit up. Let's let's roll with it. You made a huge list of nicknames. You've been reading one every week. You've got what, like thirty more or something? <laughs> yeah, number. something like that. Something so ridiculous. strap yourselves in, guys, because this isn't going away. Nope, not ever. Anytime soon. That there are. There were 11 names, and that was number five. <laughs> so we've got six more to go. So we have six more names to go. Okay. So, yeah. Um, turns out Gaston's favorite little bugger has got the hots for him? Yeah. Apparently. And people were upset about it? Huh. Question mark? Okay. What do you think? Do you think that the um, facial scene in Beauty and the Beast was too much? <laughs> I mean, I think it was really pushing the boundaries as to, I mean, as far as it goes, it's like a live action copy of the, 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 uh, the animated version. Right. So I don't remember a facial being in the animated version, but I, I haven't watched it in a few years. Yeah. It was in there. It was just kind of interactive. Oh, okay. Gotcha. You had, it was an audience participation thing. Ah, that makes sense. So when, when they're shaking the beer foam around and it's sloshing everywhere. You just got to assume. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Well, that makes sense. Apparently, the only thing that happens is you see him, like, dancing at the end with a guy for, like, three seconds in okay. a panning shot. Okay. And he makes, he lifts up his shirt when he's talking about how nobody bites like Gaston. Okay. And even then, I've seen that referenced a couple places, and I don't know if that's true. Because that does sound, because the line, from what I've seen people say, and this is on multiple sources, that he lifts up his shirt as he sings the line, nobody bites like Gaston, nobody spits like Gaston. And yeah. he, like, lifts up his shirt. In the animated version or the other one? The other one. Oh, okay. I think, well, I think that's how the song goes in the original it one, is. too. It is. But isn't it a little provocative if he's lifting up his shirt and talking about biting and spitting? I mean, if you want to go that way, but it's pretty established that Gaston is this big, hulking beast of a man who just likes to wrestle with his friends. Mm -hmm. So the thing that makes you more manly would be suffering through your friends love nibbles you know <laughs> having spitting contests i mean fuck we've all done that i guess so yeah yeah i mean just because we're spitting doesn't mean we're spitting out semen <laughs> semen <laughs> spitting out semen so you give this a thumbs up or a thumbs down i give this a thumbs sideways like you don't really care it's it's more provocative that apparently the yellow ranger in the power rangers movie is a lesbian 
Really? I, that's what I was told. I don't know. I haven't seen it. Nor do I care. Because which is surprising, because you're notoriously anti-homosexual. Yeah, I am. I know, but you know, the homos are here to stay. So <laughs> you there's should, nothing I can do about you that. You should right? you should put in a disclaimer that you're kidding at this point. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't care if you're gay or not. You're the I, homos. I never are, have. The homos are here to stay. Yeah, the homos are here to stay. That's gonna and keep you from winning an Oscar. That's <laughs> <laughs> it'll be taken completely out of context whenever I become famous. Which is happening very soon. Mm -hmm. But no, like I I was told this and I was just like, okay, cool. That was my response because it it is a life that people live. I don't care what people do in their lives. As long as it's not hurt. I mean, we've talked about this before. As long as it's not hurting themselves or others. I don't care if they're gay. You know, they can be happy and gay. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't affect me one bit. That's all there is to that. Yeah. It, it, it has zero impact on my life. If you wanted to turn around and be gay, Brandon, I'd say good on you, buddy. Thanks, man. Yeah. And you should, because damn it, you're pretty. I mean, my hair is <laughs> <laughs> impeccable today. You, you looked like you walked out of a wind tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I was doing that um, parachuting where you're in that wind tunnel. Oh, yeah. Okay. I was practicing my flips. Gotcha. For whenever I go swimming. Right. In the sky. Yeah. Sky, sky, sky swimming, swimming. That's what I call yep. it. Mm -hmm. Not skydiving, but sky swimming. Well, I was am I was amazed with all of this stuff around the Beauty and the Beast thing because the original, the cartoon movie Beauty and the Beast already had a gay character. Who? That um that little teacup chip. Yeah. He was gay. What? Yeah. What do you mean? He was super gay. <laughs> Why do you say that? Uh the gangbang? What I don't know what you're going for on this joke, but it's not sailing. I'm not I'm going not, for any sort of. joke. I have no idea what you're talking. I'm not about. going for any sort of joke. I'm talking about people remember. You know, you remember movies fondly, and you remember the big scenes. You remember the dance scene. You remember maybe the the Beast is Mine scene. Yeah. Go back and watch the original animated Beauty and the Beast. There's a scene where Chip, the teacup, is in a full on gangbang with a group of naked men, and it's like a ten minute scene. It's nestled in between when you find out the history of the Beast. And uh, whenever Gaston gets drunk in the end, like nestled in, it's a full on scene. I'm telling you, go back and watch it. And you'll see it. OK, I'll do that. OK, I'll, I'll do just that. So what do we got? <laughs> I don't know. You've <laughs> completely taken the wind out of my sails. I <laughs> take the wind out of your sails. What have you been playing with a factual statement about the movie? Have you been playing anything fun? No, not really. Oh, I have okay. nothing to say as far as what I've been playing. Oh, OK. Didn't Larry ask a question that you answered on the comments, but was it Larry that asked? Yeah. Okay. Why don't you, why don't you recap that? Um, he was asking about No Man's Sky because I talked about how there was a new update for it. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. And he asked if it's worth going back to. And I said, and we'll repeat here, if you played the original No Man's Sky or when it was first released and you hated the minutia, the minute to minute Mining, getting stuff, putting it back on your ship, trying to find inventory, selling it back and forth ad nauseum. Yeah. You're still going to hate it because that's still the core gameplay. Gotcha. It's added in a lot more. There's base building. You can make uh, land rovers and do that. You can hire people for your bases. Right. So there's a lot more to it, but the base backbone of the game is still the same. Okay. So it's still ultimately a, a survival exploration game. Yeah. Gotcha. I spent a few days playing it a bunch when the new update happened. Yeah. I really enjoyed my time. I haven't gone back to it um, just because really no reason. I just kind of been burnt out on playing stuff. Right. So what are we going to do when you run out of uh, things to play, Brandon? I won't run out of things to play. Mm -hmm. I have probably 100 games on my Humble Bundle downloads that yeah. I have yet to even install or play. Right. So I could have enough games to play until the end of time. Right. I just get kind of burnt out on stuff. Dueling Ogre is not brought to you by Humble Bundle. Yeah. Thanks, Humble Bundle, for not replying to our emails. Yeah. Come on. I know it's in beta, but still. Yeah. People know <laughs> us. Yeah. People, people Go listen. back and listen to the first five minutes. That hilarious joke about the gangbang from Beauty and the Beast landed. <laughs> that's, that's the podcast. <laughs> it's perfect. Listening material for all ages. <laughs> Jesus. A teacup getting filled up in a lot of different ways. Uh, <laughs> too funny. But it leaks because he's too, got no, that chip. He's got fun. that it's, chip. Let's, 
move on. Oh my god, that's uh, speaking of things that leak. <laughs> <laughs> See, I was going to come off the No Man's Sky with the space news, but... Uh, Microsoft is injecting ads into Windows 10. Okay. Which Windows 10 already has ads. Right. They're injecting ads into File Explorer. What? Yeah. That's stupid. So whenever you open up Windows File Explorer, which is, if you're not a computer-ish person, File Explorer is where you go to see... Um, Files. How, how would you describe File Explorer? Uh, well, you, to the you layman, would, to to you would you would go into File Explorer to explore your file. Perfect. Okay. Thank you, Remington. Uh-huh. Uh huh. So That's yeah, what if, I'm here for. But there's going to be ads in it now. Okay. In the new Creator update. The Creator update. The Creator dictates that there shall be more ads, and they will be plentiful. <laughs> and it was good. And it was good. So I didn't get a whole lot more to it because right. I was ready to be righteously outraged and bring some, you know, righteous indignation to this story. Yeah. Apparently it's turned on by default, but you can go in and turn the ads off. Okay. And it's not, so it's not that huge of a deal, but <laughs> it still goes back to the fact that I think I've hammered home enough. My dislike of windows 10. Right. And how I kept saying from the beginning and I sounded like a fucking crazy person that there's no reason they're giving it to you for free. They're getting their money somewhere. And there it is. Yep. They're, they're throwing ads into your operating system. Not just ads, but ads that are tailored to you based on your searches, you know, your cookies, all of that stuff. The stuff that, you know, the internet has been doing for years and everybody has come to terms with now. Yeah. But uh, yeah, they're just, they're going to keep selling you shit. Yeah. It's, it's, it's affiliate marketing for an operating system. That's all it is. Yeah, anytime I open up my Windows 10 computer now, I see a bunch of ads for teacup related porn. Right. <laughs> Constantly. And I'm like, you look up 15 one or 16 videos you look and up, suddenly you know who you, I am. You look up one video and then a little bit down, you look up three videos and a little bit down, <laughs> you look up 17 videos. And <laughs> Brandon, I think you have a problem. I think I do too. And I think we need to go see a psychiatrist. Mm hmm. Or a psychologist. I forget which one deals with um, sex. I forget which one hey, you can any have Any doctor sex deals with. with sex if you talk at him enough. <laughs> <laughs> I really creeped out my dentist. <laughs> so I want a fucking teacup, Doc. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell has happened in this episode? Oh my. Why did we become so cruel? I don't know. What's cruel about fucking a teacup, if anything? No, cruel to our audience, just being completely vulgar. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I don't think I've said anything more vulgar than we've said before. This is true. I'm not, we're not getting no, into it's, the it's, specifics. It's not, it's not, the, it's not the, the actual bit. It's just how very compact this whole thing has been. Yeah. Well, it's we're a just, lot. We're not, we're not dragging it out over the episode. Or a couple episodes. We'll get it all out now, so the next few episodes will be squeaky clean. Yeah. Boobs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of boobs remy had a story about space <laughs> good segue yeah i did i had a, a real good um real good thing about space here oh, there's got to be a better segue for that um no. speaking of things that frighten and terrify us remington you had a story about space yeah, I did. Planetary scientist Kirby Runyon of the John Hopkins University wants to stir the shit pot about Pluto being a planet again. Is that is that a quote from the article or did you <laughs> No, no, no. Is no, that I, editorial content stir the shit pot? No, that's that's me. That's all me, baby. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, thanks. His new definition states that a planet would be anything with enough mass to reach hydrostatic equilibrium, which is the point at which uh, gravity pulls an object's mass to a spherical state. Okay. This new definition would not only contain Pluto, but dwarf planet Eris, which was announced in 2005, and a hundred other celestial bodies. So it would make our solar system have hundreds of planets? Yes. So now instead of grade school kids learning eight planets, which is easier than nine planets was originally, mm -hmm. because it's one less. Plus they could teach them about math too, because they could teach them eight minus one. Yeah. Or nine minus one. Which is solid math. Which is solid. Eight plus one or nine minus one. Yeah. Maybe two the, two different math lessons right there. Right, exactly. So instead of all of that noise, now they're going to have to memorize 102 more planets. So that'd be 110. Yes. See, you learned the math. I learned the and math. And that only took you a slightly uncomfortable amount of time to add 102 <laughs> plus eight. Exactly. <laughs> plus one star. So they're naming a star a planet? 
No, I'm just. It would be it would be eleven celestial bodies or a hundred and eleven celestial bodies. Oh, okay, my math is faulty. So, what's the mnemonic going to be for that? The the mnemonic. Yeah, is that what's what it's called? Like my very educated mother just served us nine pizzas. Yeah, <laughs> nine pizzas. I feel like I slurred that for some reason. <laughs> you did. Just served us nine pizzas. Listen, listen to that at point uh, five speed on on <laughs> Windows Media Player, and listen to how drunk Brandon sounds. My and then it changed once Pluto was gone. Yeah. So what did it change to? Did did she just have something? My very educated mother just served us nasty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she just served us nasty, Peter. Well, and they would change it too, if you remember, because sometimes Neptune would be further than Pluto. Yeah. So it would be nine pizzas or something. Pn. I don't remember what it was. I didn't know about that. Just served us pork nachos oh my god speaking of pork nachos we had mo's i i had mo's for the first time which is like chipotle right yeah i guess yeah it's like they equated it to subway for tex-mex okay essentially um and i got a pork bowl apparently mo's has pork bowl yeah apparently mo's has mo's fridays or Moe's Mondays, sorry, that's fucking wrong, where you can get a big-ass burrito or a bowl for $5. Okay. Just, like, with all the stuff that you want on it on it. And, um, yeah, it was fucking delicious. I've never had Moe's before. Have you had Chipotle before? Uh, is that the one that they put in the mall? No. Okay, then no. Chipotle, Moe's is the exact same thing as Chipotle, okay. or vice versa. You okay. go and, like... What kind of tortilla do you want? What kind of beans do you want? Blah, blah, blah. It's like an assembly line. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. So you got a pork bowl. Yes. And what is a pork bowl? Uh, Just, you know, pulled pork or shredded Mexican style pork and and rice and beans and yada, yada, yada. And a, can, is it an edible shell? No, it's you can get an edible shell. They had them. Mm. Um, but no, I just got a big old bowl. I prefer my food in edible bowls. I do too, but I don't know why, because I usually end up just like muscling through the edible bowl at the end. I'm just like, I don't really want to eat this, but I'm going to eat it because it's food. And my mom told me that I have to clean my plate (laughs) and I'm not one of these stuck up little bastard kids who gets to eat whatever they want just because their parents don't want to hear them yelling. So they'll fix them fucking mac and cheese for every meal you're saying all this as you're eating too right yes. out loud yes out loud for the <laughs> entire time. restaurant to hear yep <laughs> i don't want to eat this bowl restaurant but i'm gonna make an eye contact make an eye contact with all the snotty little bastards who are like i don't want to eat this no i don't like beef so you've, you've just got taco meat yeah. pork dripping down like, your you face better you eat that this. kid when I was your age, my mom would beat the shit out of me if I didn't clean my plate. <laughs> Which, she wouldn't. She didn't have to. I mean, I'm a fat kid. <laughs> <laughs> I had no problem cleaning my now. plate. Yeah. My mom used to always make me clean my plate. Remington, we would actively keep you from trying to clean your plate. Yes. You were literally licking the plate in restaurants. It was embarrassing for us. This is all true. <laughs> That's the funny thing. Yeah, I mean, you still lick plates now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if if it's got some juices on it, I ain't gonna let that steak juice go to waste. <laughs> you kidding me? Dip my roll into the steak blood. It's good stuff. See, that's normal for yeah. the most part. Well, I mean, if I don't have a roll, though, I'll just pour it into my mouth. <laughs> the tongue is nature's roll. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's why I keep a necklace of cat tongues around. They're more absorbent. <laughs> just suck on them. For the rest of the evening, steak flavored cat tongue. This got yeah. super weird. This whole episode is just a... <laughs> yeah. What happened? We had a really good comeback episode, and this is. I think this is the best episode we've ever this done. This is a train wreck of fantastic. Mess. Okay, so cat necklaces aside, <laughs> yeah, uh, cat tongue necklaces. What do you think about this space story? Because I just don't give a shit. I'm gonna be honest with you. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't care. Really? Who cares what we call them? If we call them planets or not? This guy sounds like he's being a pedantic little bitch. He's just like, oh <laughs> hey, mm, here's my lab coat. <laughs> <laughs> because all scientists wear lab coats yep, yeah. naturally. Yeah. Um. You know, it's a, it's it's one of those things that people are still very contentious about is whether Pluto is a planet or not. Mm-hmm. Ginger, uh, with conviction, yells that it's a planet. And she refuses to believe that it's a dwarf planet. See, here's the here's the thing that really drives me nuts. It's called a dwarf planet. So planet is still in the name. Yeah, it's still a planet. It's just small. It's smaller. 
So the the current going definition of a planet that was changed in 2006 with the uh, announcement of Eris being a dwarf planet and the reclassification of Pluto into a dwarf planet because it's a similar size to Eris is that a planet needs to be big enough to clear its path and also rotate around the sun. Okay. Um, I guess in line with the other planets, because Pluto doesn't. Pluto has an elliptical orbit that is different from the rest of the planet. Yeah. So, also, it's out in the uh, Kuiper Belt. So, it's not big enough to be clearing out other things from it. Clearing out? How do you mean? Like, the gravitational pull of the other planets will actually sling bits away from them or pull them in to themselves. Oh, uh, okay. You know what? You see what I'm saying there? Yeah. Okay. Um, which I guess, but Pluto has two moons. It's one more moon than we have. Yeah. Unless you go with the fact that we do have two moons. I guess there's an asteroid that's caught in our field that's acting like a moon, but it's smaller, but it's still an asteroid. Like, it's not a proper moon. That's no moon. <laughs> What? <laughs> you just kind of you just kind of went off. I just had to throw it in there. You just entertained yourself there. There's no moon. Um that's no moon. That's not a moon. So he wants to call basically any space body a planet. Any space body that's big enough to coalesce into a circle. See, it, it has right. enough just mass. Just shit Yeah, it have it has enough mass to pull itself into a spherical shape. Which I mean, I guess is fair. Here's my totally non-educated opinion on this. Okay. I feel like this is a guy who wants to, who who probably has this strong belief, like, well, if we're going to call them planets and anything that's a circle is a planet. Right. And he's put this out there because he wants recognition for it. Yeah. This guy could be, a, and probably is, you know, an astrophysicist. Uh, so no, he's, he's he's not an astrophysicist. I told he's actually you, a janitor. He is a planetary scientist. He is a scientist of the planets. Okay. He's. He, he specifies in planetary science. So he's like the James Dean of planetary scientists now. He's trying to, to <laughs> carve his own path. Yeah. So that begs the question, though, you know, what do other planetary scientists say about this? Sorry for talking through a yawn, but I didn't want to lose my thought. I mean, they got to think he's a dick. I mean, do they or do they agree with him? Like, you know, we, we've got physicists in this article that I found who disagree you know, we've got What's other the guy's scientists. Name? Uh, Kirby Runyon. R-U-N-I-O-N? R-U-N-Y-O-N. Okay, so I found no specific hits when I Googled, is Kirby Runyon a dickhead? <laughs> I was hoping <laughs> yeah. to find maybe an opinion piece. Uh-huh. Uh, he, he, he goes on in this article that says, um, I'm interested in an object's intrinsic properties. What is on its surface and in its interior? Whether an object is in orbit around another planet or the sun doesn't really matter to me. As for the geophysical definition, it's only about one force and one property, the mass, said Alan Stern, who leads NASA's New Horizons mission, or who led NASA's New Horizons mission to visit Pluto in 2015. Mr. Stern is a co-author on a paper outlining Mr. Runyon's new definition. I think it's very elegant as a physicist. So here he has a, he has a physicist who's uh, co-authoring with him. As well. Maybe. Yeah, and I, I'm reading more about him here, and I might have to go back on my looking for fame thing. Oh, yeah? Because he seems pretty well-respected okay. in his field and also a pretty well-known scientist. So there you go. Putting you insert foot into mouth, Brandon. But it's still, I mean, doesn't it kind of just seem like something you would say for the shock value of it? I mean, that's kind of where science is now. I mean... <laughs> we oh, Are you saying that we've discovered... All that we can possibly discover, and now scientists are just reneging on things just to, uh, yeah, I just mean, for shock value. We know everything out there now. Who cares? Okay, okay fair enough. They got to rename animals and shit. Yeah. No, I'm saying that <laughs> science isn't sexy to a lot of people. Yeah. And funding to science is always being threatened to be cut. Right. So science needs to come out. It's just like when NASA has these huge things where they're like, we're going to announce something huge about space in two weeks. Yeah. You know, stuff like that. It's to keep people interested in it. Right. So you can't have this day-to-day -day stuff. Only people who are already interested in science are going to hear it and be interested. Yeah. But you need to keep the sciences fresh in people's minds with these big announcements. So people are like, oh, yeah, science is doing cool stuff. We should keep allowing the government to give money to science. Right. 
So yeah, I feel like you just got to make science sexier. And that's what an announcement like this is. <laughs> it's just to... Is, hey, I'm renaming. Because it gets people interested. It gets people seeing the story and saying, why would they do that? Let's read more. Right, yeah. And I guess it's not a bad thing. I've totally done a, a complete flip-flop on this. More power <laughs> to them. Name them all planets. Who cares? <laughs> Name every animal on Earth a planet. So we've got a billion planets now. I'm yeah. fine with it. Yeah, do it. there you go. <laughs> when Pluto was named a planet in 1930, astronomers vastly overestimated its size. Suggesting they could be even larger than Jupiter. What a bunch of idiots. They're a bunch of dummies. Dumb dummies. Oh, that's probably going to be huge then, huh? Yeah. I don't know. I see. I I was always in the camp of not caring about this particular bit of information either. Like, Pluto doesn't have to be a planet in my eyes. Yeah. You know, as I know that as a scientific mind, as we continue to learn more, we tend to reclassify. Mm-hmm. You know, there's there's a reason that we reclassify, and it's because we've learned new things about particular objects. Does this cause a lot of arguments with Ginger? Yes. Because she feels so strongly about, yes, about it being Pluto. a planet? No, I just uh, don't engage in that. Well, I'll pick at her, because, you know, that's what boyfriends do. Yeah. They pick on their girlfriends. I'm like, no, it's a planet. It's not a planet. And she's like, yeah, it's totally a planet. <laughs> and that's how we... That's how we... That's foreplay? Yeah. <laughs> it seems like... <laughs> um what i was gonna say it's it seems like in your house one of those things you don't talk about in uh mixed company right religion politics pluto pluto mm -hmm. yeah those are all things that we do not discuss in this house mm -hmm. so yeah what else do you have that was my that was my space story for science uh sony uh-huh is moving forward with their venom movie oh really yep so before Amazing Spider-Man 2 even came out, they had announced a Sinister Six film, yeah. a Venom standalone film, right. and had really prepared to milk Spider-Man a lot right, and yeah. all of his spider nips. And then <laughs> Amazing Spider-Man 2 didn't do so well. Spider-Man Homecoming is coming out. They apparently are still working on the Venom film they were working on before. Okay. And it is set for a release date of October 5th, 2018. Mm, okay. Alex Kurtzman, the writer for Amazing Spider-Man 2, is directing it. Okay. And he is also the director of the new The Mummy reboot. Okay. Because we needed a mummy reboot. Yeah. Well, there was so much lore left untold in The Mummies. Right. Didn't they make three of those? There was The Mummy. Yeah. There was The Mummy 2, even mummier. <laughs> uh-huh. And then there was The Mummy 3. Oh, shit, this again? <laughs> mum please <laughs> mummy please um yeah, there's a scorpion king yeah there then was, there the was a spin-off scorpion king movie oh yeah there was two scorpion king movies scorpion king and scorpion king even scorpion hour <laughs> <laughs> and that's one of those rare moments where the sequel's better than the original yeah yeah there's way more scorpions totally more scorpions. a lot of crowns kevin loved it because kevin's got a big penchant for Scorpion. Oh, yeah, doesn't he have a scorpion tattoo? Yeah, he has a scorpion tattoo. He's got a scorpion ring that he wears all the time. Oh, yeah, that's right. He's the scorpion king. He loves the band, He's the scorpions. The yeah. So I don't know how I feel about... I mean, the movie... If it's the same movie that's been worked on since Amazing Spider-Man 2... Yeah. It's going to have gone through so many rewrites to be where it's at now. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be... It'll be curious to see if they follow the direction of... The other Spider-Man movies, like in feel and tone, because wasn't that one of the things that really kind of killed those movies? Or was it just that the first run of Spider-Man movies, like the first one was good and then the rest of them just progressively got shittier and that killed the franchise so that nobody wanted to see another reboot of Spider-Man? Was that it? Well, Spider I haven't seen the Garfield ones. Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 3 was panned. Oh, yeah. And he too wasn't that great either. Two's considered one of the is like one of the highest rated superhero movies. Really? Yeah, and like you know, audience polls for what that's worth. Huh. Amazing Spider Man two. That was the one with Doc Ock, or not Amazing Spider Man, regular Spider Man. Uh, okay. Two. That one was the one with Doc Ock. Yeah, Alfred Molina. Yeah. Well, and then Spider Man was, yeah, three had Venom and the symbiote suit and some other stuff. I've only seen bits and pieces, and I was pretty drunk when I watched it, so I don't remember very much. Oh, it. fair enough. Then Amazing Spider-Man 2 had Andrew Garfield. I liked it just fine. Yeah. I was surprised to see people kind of shitting on it. But even then, 
Sony, I think, had pushed this reboot of Spider-Man. Like, here's Andrew Garfield. Here's this. Spider-Man's coming back, baby. And then it didn't live up to expectations because it didn't blow people's minds. Okay. It was a great movie. I loved it. Okay. And then Amazing Spider-Man 2, apparently Jamie Foxx, I think, played Electro. It just, it was kind of all over the place. They tried to introduce too many villains into it. The rhino kind of just got thrown in there at the end. Okay. And it just, people lost interest. Gotcha. But that would have been building up to a Sinister Six then, wouldn't it? Yeah, and they'd already announced. I think that was one of the first times that you really saw superhero exhaustion starting to seep into people. Right. As Sony was like, we got Amazing Spider-Man. We got Amazing Spider-Man 2. We got Sinister Six. We're doing a standalone movie for each of them. You like the Rhino? Guess what? Rhino's getting fucking 18 movies. <laughs> what do you think about Vulture? Guess what? Vulture shirts. Vulture underpants. Movies about Vulture underpants. Sisterhood of the Traveling Vulture Pants. Three of them. I like that. Eat it. Yeah. So. Because it's Carrion. Vulture. Yeah. Fuck it. Because it's Carrion. <laughs> Vulture. <laughs> <laughs> so a Venom standalone movie, they can't make you can't make a movie about a villain, right? Sure. Where you can. he's just doing shitty things and it's a villain the whole time. Sure you can. You know, the 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 hero doesn't always win. Sometimes the villain gets away to villain again. Yeah, you, know, you could always see that's one of those things that they just they still haven't done in movies so much. I mean, there have been movies that have come out that you see the villain. And there have been movies that you come out that you see the villain win, mm -hmm. but they haven't been superhero movies. You know, everybody wants to see their superhero win. So I don't think that in order for the super villain to win, that he has to kill or otherwise capture the superhero. He just has to survive. He does. That's all a super villain does. He just survives until the next big <clears throat> thing. You know? Yeah. So I don't think it's impossible to write a super villain story. Of course, now that being said, the Venom symbiote, once he attaches to Eddie Brock, becomes a force of good, correct? Or was it two separate symbiotes? From what I remember, and it's been... Because there's a whole fucking planet. It has passed through a lot of hands. Yeah. So this is what I remember from the 90s when I read the comics. The symbiote was on Peter Parker yeah. originally. Yes. Then moved to Eddie Brock. Eddie Brock was evil. Okay. Eddie Brock robbed and shit because eddie brock wasn't a bad guy the symbiote twisted his mind okay then he started to take control back of the symbiote and managed to sort of convince it to work together uh -huh. that's where he got the whole we venom would call himself we right. we are going to do this we are going to do that right because eddie brock was had managed to turn the symbiote to sort of work with him as opposed to controlling him completely right peter parker managed to do that too when he first got the symbiote because he didn't realize that it was a living thing that could control his mind was connected. Yeah. So it started to twist him into becoming evil. And that's, and when he tried to get rid of the suit, that's when it started to fight him. Yeah. So then that's mainly the push for why Venom was a villain is because the symbiote took over Eddie Brock and wanted to kill Peter Parker. Cause it knew Spider-Man was Peter Parker and was like, fuck it. We're going to do awful shit and draw his attention so we can get Spider-Man and kill him. Cause we hate him. Yeah. Gotcha. But the Venom now in the comics is a good guy. He's like a vigilante punisher type. Yeah. So that's where, I mean, that's where the movie would have to go. Yeah. And, that, and that's what I, that's what I'm saying is, you know, the symbiote, like from what I have read is you know, there's an entire planet of symbiotes, mm. you know, and they all just kind of writhe together in one symbiotic orgy mass. Right. Yeah. And they all communicate with each other, you know, et cetera and so on. But the further you get away, and it's all this, it's all um, telepathic, you know, bonding, right? Yeah. So in this giant planet, planet mass of symbiotes, um, it, all of that telepathic energy resonates through the universe. So the further a bit of symbiote gets from the planet, the crazier it gets because it doesn't have that telepathic link. Okay. So that's why... The initial symbiote that, you know, took over Peter Parker and uh, was evil with because there there were three different people. There was Eddie Brock. And who was the third one? There was Peter Parker, um, Eddie Brock, and then somebody else. Right now, the venom is Flash Thompson. Flash Thompson. That's who I was thinking. Of. And Flash is the good, good guy. Yeah. OK. Flash is the guy that picked on Peter. Right. Okay. In the comics. So we have Peter 
a suffering symbiote who hasn't had anybody to communicate. Suffering symbiote. <laughs> who hasn't had anybody to communicate telepathically with. He links up with Peter and tries to take over Peter's mind. Um, and Peter fights it, not realizing that all the symbiote needs is just a telepathic bond. Right? Mm, yes. Just for for the sake of argument, just agree. Yeah. Because I'm not sure. Yeah. So Peter Parker fights off the symbiote. Um, symbiote runs Eddie Brock. Eddie Brock is a bad dude. Well, he's a petty thief, mm-hmm. you know. Um, so are you pitching me an idea right now? No, I'm, I'm just, not following. Or I'm you're just, just trying to run through the storyline okay, of gotcha. where we're at now. Gotcha. Um, Eddie recognizes that the symbiote is a you know living entity. They form a telepathic bond. They still do evil shit because the ultimate goal is to kill Spider-Man. But there's a realization within, within the symbiote saying, okay, Spider-Man isn't necessarily a bad dude. It's just there was a huge misunderstanding, a miscommunication between us. Yeah. Right? Uh, Flash Thompson gets the symbiote and becomes part of the Spider-Man team because now the symbiote has had enough telepathic bonding with people that it has regained some of its sanity. Okay. And is now able to differentiate between right and wrong and good and bad. You know, it was crazier in the earlier days. So it had no moral compass. Whenever it was on Eddie Brock as Venom, especially early on, it was fueled by just pure hatred. Exactly. Like hate was its thing. Yeah. yeah. So, but, you know, hate comes from misunderstanding and craziness too, you know? Mm-hmm. You see people who hate things and they just don't understand them. Yeah. Or they're batshit crazy and anything sets them off. So I still stand on my point. Yeah. No, I get what you're saying. Yeah. So anyway, um, this was all about the Venom movie and and what could you do with a villain, right? Right. Is is what we were dancing around. Yeah. So, yeah, I I figure that in the Venom movie we could see maybe it's Eddie Brock, um, the symbiote finally regains its 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 moral compass, you know, and realizes that what it's been doing has been wrong, and then it moves on to Flash Thompson, and then we get good guy Venom. Um, which what what is it? What is he called now? Agent Venom, I think. Agent Venom. Yeah. I mean, come on, dude. <laughs> you can't come up with a better name than that. No, well, <laughs> to be fair, Flash Thompson is an idiot. So yes, Agent Venom. But I like what he's, he's recruited into he's recruited into Spider-Man's little group of, of spider dudes. Oh, yeah, that's right. He did start his own. Yeah. Spider dudes. Yeah. With Miles Morales after he got stuck in in the same Peter Parker Spider-Man dimension. 616. Is that our Earth? Yeah, I think so. And uh, Scarlet, Scarlet Spider. Um, I can't remember all of them. It, it's it's the current well i think it's the ongoing series that they have on disney xd right now oh okay yeah i like the premise that I, you were getting at inadvertently or intentionally if the venom movie followed the symbiote not the person controlling it but the symbiote itself as it goes from one thing to another yeah and wouldn't that be interesting i mean it, it would be a huge departure we wouldn't have to rely on we we'd have to really push the boundaries of understanding an alien creature you know an alien creature is always the bad guy right yeah so now we have these ancillary characters which are just the the meat sacks that the symbiote uses to to control things yeah you know yeah we still need actors to give a good performance but really we need the symbiote to give a good performance and we need to make under make people understand within the movie that the symbiote is the thing that we need to be looking for the performance of. Yeah. You know, you would have to portray all of its emotions through the actors that it's yeah inhabiting at the time. Yeah. And I think it could be done through dialogue, but you really have to push the boundaries of what people are willing to accept. Oh man. Imagine like I'm picturing a scene right now where it's, it gets thrown off or, chased off of somebody say spider-man or, or eddie brock or whoever you know with the sonic because right yeah and you see it and it's like slithering through Times square mm-hmm. or a big busy bustling whatever and you see crowds of people kind of milling around and you can just hear the sound of it slithering you can't necessarily see it but you can tell as it's inhabiting people and then moving on yeah. as you watch like this big crowd shot and it'll zoom in on a person's face as you like see 
the symbiote's like hurt and confusion as it just passes from person to person trying oh, to get. Oh yeah, that would be. So really you're getting cool. the full range of like an actor's emotions, but over you know fifteen twenty people yeah. as it's just inhabiting for a second, moving on. Yeah, that would be really cool for sure. That's how you would show kind of the emotion of the thing. Yeah, but you'd and you're right, but you'd you'd still have to do it through dialogue too. Oh yeah, I'm just talking that yeah, one particular. That scene. That would be a really cool scene. For That's sure. That's what we sell, Sony. Yeah, get them on the phone. All right. Boop, 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 boop. Sony, we've got some ideas for your Venom movie. What'd they say? Uh, they said that we're nobodies. Oh, tell them about my um, gay teacup idea. Hey, uh, we've got a gay teacup idea. Hello? Hello? They hung up. Shit, we'll call them back after the show, I guess. Okay, fair enough. Um, speaking of otherworldly things. Right. That are particular abominations on humanity. <laughs> okay. The Big Bang Theory was renewed for an 11th and 12th season. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you don't like the Big Bang Theory? I'm ambivalent, honestly. I'm yeah. just jumping on the hate train from geeks of the Big Bang Theory. I, I don't really... I mean, I've seen episodes. It's like My Name is Earl or Two and a Half Men. Yeah. If it's on, I'll watch it and like kind of chuckle or like, Meh, this is a thing. Yeah. But I don't go out of my way to watch it. <laughs> gotcha. What's your opinion on Big Bang Theory? I'm, I'm, I'm the same way. I don't really... I'll enjoy it if it's on my television, but I didn't put it there. It kind of looks like from newer episodes that I've seen, it's become sort of the Sheldon show. Yeah. So yeah. it's a lot like Family Matters with Urkel taking over in like second and third season because yeah. Sheldon is not a likable character. Right. He is an irritating, irritating guy. Yeah. Uh, they are filming a spinoff pilot. The pilot's being directed by John Favreau. Okay. Favreau. 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 Yeah. It's just. Did I, I not say it right? It just made me chuckle that you said it's Favreau. Favreau. Yeah. Favreau. John Favreau. I didn't know if you were being intentional on, on We'll say I was being intentional. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a spinoff show called Young Sheldon that is a sitcom about Sheldon. As well, a kid that sounds awful. In high school or junior high. Yeah. Being all awkward. I'm Sheldon. <laughs> yeah, that sounds terrible. Okay. That was a spot on impression. Thank you. Yeah. So I don't care about that at all. Right. Good. I'm glad you could bring news that we, neither one of us cared about onto our show. Well, I thought you'd watch the Big Bang Theory some. Oh, I have, but yeah, I'm I'm in the same same shop as you. Uh, South by Southwest released their 2017 uh, Gaming Awards winners. We oh, have yeah. yeah, yeah, we have uh, Uncharted Four: A Thief's End winning Game of the Year. Uh, Mo- this is for this year. Yeah, mobile remember. mobile Game of the Year is Pokemon Go. Go figure. Esports Game of the Year, Overwatch. Tabletop game of the year, Arkham Horror, the card game. And, you know, this isn't like the end all be all of games of the year. This is just South by Southwest's estimation of best games. Yeah. Trending game of the year winner, Overwatch, uh, uh, released by my favorite company, Blizzard Entertainment, right? Yeah. Uh, fan creation of the year was Brutal Doom 64, apparently. Oh, what is Brutal Doom 64? I have no idea. I've heard of that. Okay, so it's a project that's porting Doom for the Nintendo 64? Okay. Uh, Doom 64 is a not-so-well-known port of Doom for the Nintendo 64. Unlike the ports for other consoles, it's not exactly a port, but a completely new game featuring completely new levels, texture sprites, enemies, and a new plot that takes place right after the events of Doom 2. Ah. Okay, so Doom Brutal Doom 64 is porting... Doom 64 to Jeezy Doom and Sandronum Engines. I don't know what Were those that actual is. words? There are also other award category winners. Um, let me know if there's anything that you'd like to... I mean, there's a pretty good list here. Um, excellence and sound effects, do you care? Uh, just read through them and I'll stop you. Battlefield 1, I could give thumbs up on that. Battlefield 1 had great sound. Excellence and music score, uh, Doom. Mm, don't know. Uh, technical achievement, Battlefield One. Visual achievement, Uncharted Four. Battlefield One. I know I talked about it when I first got it. Battlefield One was an amazing game. Was it? Single player was great. I mean, yeah, there's there's parts that kind of you know chug along story wise, but for the most part, it was a great story. And I think these awards, especially for being a AAA title, I wouldn't normally give a shit about. Right. Battlefield One deserves a lot of the accolades. Uncharted 4, I don't have a PlayStation, so I haven't played. Uh-huh. Um, but there are very few people I've ever met who have played Uncharted, the series at all, and didn't like them. Right, gotcha. So, Excellence in Visual Achievement, uh, Uncharted 4, Thief's End, 
in animation. Uncharted takes it. Yeah, excellence in art is Firewatch. Firewatch looks interesting. I've never played it. It's like a walking simulator survival thing. Okay, um, gotcha. Where you're in a, the woods during a forest fire. Oh, interesting. Okay. Mm-hmm. And it's co- sort of like a cell shaded ish graphic style. Okay. Uh, excellence in Convergence, Batman, the Telltale series. I'm not really sure what that means, except yeah. that it's episodic. So Convergence maybe the in process the uh, that all the storylines come together well. I guess the only other that's thing the only, I can, maybe maybe that's what it means that the storyline is very tight and cohesive. It also well, it's a Telltale game, so it's like a choose your own adventure. It also oh, okay. was the first of yeah. the Telltale games where you could. Um, stream it and have people vote on your choices oh, it was okay. a whole built-in mechanic where it would come to a big choice and the people watching you could vote oh that's and interesting. whoever had the more votes would go ah. so maybe it's a reference on converging of different whatevers maybe could be um excellence in multiplayer overwatch most memorable character uncharted 4 most promising new intellectual property overwatch and blizzard's killing it with overwatch yeah i mean it's it's become incredibly popular in the esports industry most fulfilling community funded game was starbound Mm -hmm. which i've never heard of um i've never played it it's kind of a space simulator though okay there's a lot more to it but yeah uh excellence in gameplay doom excellence in design dishonored 2 excellence in narrative uncharted again Matthew Crump Cultural Innovation Award, <laughs> that dragon, comma cancer. That game I've never played because I think it would kind of tear me apart to play it. Oh, really? It's supposed to be. It was a guy who wrote about. I can't remember. It was either his experience with cancer or watching his child go through the experience with cancer. Oh man. Um, I think it's about a child dealing with cancer through the eyes of a child. Gotcha. But it's it's a really heavy introspective. One of those things that people quote sometimes as like, is it, is it really a game, though, or is it a narrative? You know, one of those things. I gotcha. But okay. it looks really, I mean, it won a lot of awards, really good writing and all that. Right. Uh, gamers Voice Multiplayer Arena Gods. Gamers Voice Single Player Owlboy. I don't know what any of this stuff means. Yeah, I don't know either. Fan Creation of the Year, Brutal Doom 64, Turning Game of the Year. Uh, we're down to the ones that I read off earlier. So... Looks like Overwatch pretty much swept it. Mm-hmm. If you want to look over those again, you can go to uh, South by Southwest slash news and or just uh, search for announcing the 2017 South by Southwest Gaming Award winners. South by Southwest showed off a new VR film. Oh, did they? Mm-hmm. Done by a studio called I8 or 8i. I can't remember. OK. Um, Starring Buzz Aldrin. OK. Where Buzz Aldrin gives a VR tour of the moon or the, of Mars while talking about what science needs to focus on to get to Mars. Ah, that sounds cool. Yeah, so they showed it at South by Southwest. It's available for free. You can download it on Steam if you have an HTC Vive. Yeah. So if you're super duper rich, you can watch it. And it's supposed <laughs> to come out for Oculus Rift later this year. Cool. But yeah. Is it is it one of the ones that you can just like load it into your phone and put the VR goggles on? Can you do that? Like the like Possibly, the, but the... it's you have to get it through Steam right now. Uh, okay. Gotcha. So I don't think you can do it on Android. Actually, no. You can, um, with a VR app, a specific VR app, you can watch it. Okay. Very good then. But yeah, it's him talking about how we're going to get to Mars and just kind of being Buzz Aldrin. <laughs> you know, being, being all... Like, well, they were, what they don't focusing on is the pit stops in between and what we do once we get there. And he talks about Elon Musk and how he's a good travel agent, but he doesn't focus on what we do when we get there. Yeah. But yeah, it won a bunch of awards too. Yeah. I guess for people who like Buzz Aldrin. <laughs> Fair enough. Final thing I have is uh, Facebook comments are headed for a Messenger like makeover. Ugh, God, I hate Facebook Messenger. My phone, I just had to update Facebook Messenger like yeah. a week ago. Yeah. It finally, because I never update my apps. I know I should, but I just never bother to. Right. I was trying to check our Dueling Ogres messages mobile through my browser and it kicks me to the messenger app and then forces me to update and blah, blah, blah. And now it has all that, like add to your day stuff. Yeah. When you post yeah, it, that stuff's annoying. it's just aggravating. It's not easier. Yeah. And so I don't know why they would make the comments more like messenger. I don't know why. Okay, they're So here's the shit they do. I, I've noticed this. I don't already. like it. <laughs> just calm down. Calm ah. down. Calm down. I've noticed this already. This uh, messenger making it more like messenger. 
So when some if you if I was on my browser last night and I commented on somebody's thing and I was still logged into Facebook and I was you know dicking around in my browser, somebody commented on the post that I had commented on a little earlier and it popped up like a message would down in the bottom. Okay. So instead of it just coming up as a notification, you have to click on the notification to go to it. It comes up like a message and you can just kind of scroll down and see what somebody else said. So it makes it easier for you to interact with them. Okay. That way you don't have to go through all the trouble of clicking three times to get to somebody's yeah message. Now you only have to click once to start typing. That makes sense. So one, two less clicks. Good job. It's just... It's intrusive, and that's what bugs me yeah. about Messenger and all of that. Well, I mean, they took, you know, you still have, if if you message somebody, you still have the chat on the right-hand side, and you can click on somebody's face and a little pop-up. But if you wanted to see it full-size, it takes you to a Messenger-style site now. It's no longer like Facebook. It's It's been redesigned to look more like Messenger. Oh, really? Yeah. So, like, if I were to... I need to find a new social media thing to use because Facebook is really just I'm so tired of it and not in the sense of like, I need to leave social media because I'm tired of it and blah, blah, blah. I just Facebook. I hate everything about it, (laughs) right? (laughs) about the website and about the messenger. And, you know, so many people use it and that's the convenience. But messenger is like the shittiest app I've ever used. The layout of it is just awful. Yeah. So if I click to it on my browser, it takes me into this messenger thing oh okay yeah and there's uh our our group message with uh with kevin putting inappropriate uh things in there and then you can see shared photos that within the message here okay uh there's there's me bottlenecking there's the gif of me bottlenecking or the gif however you want to say it so it's got almost a gmail look to it now yeah yeah i guess you could call it that i mean it's neat yeah it's convenient it's a that thing. you can see all the gifts that are shared. Yeah. I don't know. It's yeah. a thing. You can re-nickname people, change the color of their uh, conversation. Ooh. You. you can change the emojis. So it's moving back towards AIM, the AOL Instant Messenger, when you could change people's pictures and colors and all that? Up t- just about, I would say. I mean, still can't see their... Like, I can't click on their name or anything to take me to their profile which is a little unfortunate that you need to get on that Facebook. Come on, get on it. I'm serious right now. Do it. Do it right now. Come on, let's go. Mark Ruffalo, get on it. Mark Ruffalo, you're my man. Make it happen. Anyway. (laughs) You just fell into a Facebook hole there. I did for on air. For a hot second, I fell into the Facebook hole. I was like, wait, who the fuck is this again? (laughs) Couldn't remember. Anyway, it wasn't, it wasn't a terrible experience. Uh, but I'll, at the same time, like, say I'm one of these crazy people who wants to put their two cents on every last little thing that I disagree with, mm-hmm. uh, like we have on, we respectively have on our own Facebooks. Yeah. Um, you know the people I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Uh, say we have those people and they're just, they're constantly putting their bullshit on somebody else's thing that they're bitching about. And you had chimed in just once and you just, that's all there is to it. So now you have to go through the trouble of turning off notifications for that comment because you don't want it constantly popping up while you're trying to look at adorable uh, puppy videos or kitty videos scrolling through your feed. So the clicks really are going to amount to the same amount of clicks regardless. Yeah, yeah. I would say so. Or maybe it'll force people to keep their mouths more shut. Yeah, shut (laughs) up, everybody. (laughs) Nobody cares about your opinion. Everybody has an asshole and an opinion. I don't know if that's the saying. Opinions... Opinions are like assholes. Everybody loves to lick Everybody them. Everybody loves to lick them. That's right. So, I don't know. <laughs> I like how the end of the episode always turns into me being, being a grumpy old man. <laughs> yeah. Ah, oh, you fucking kids with your Facebooks. Yeah, that's all kind I, of the running Oh, everybody now. wants to see what their fucking opinion does. Oh, everybody's going to stir the shit pot. <laughs> I, love the, I love the phrase shit pot, too. <laughs> So are we ready for shout outs? I guess I, I've turned into a grumpy old man. We must be done. <laughs> well, the moon is full. Now, what would what would be the thing that the would happen? The night is young and you're so beautiful. Sorry. It reminded me of uh, Men in Tights. Okay. So uh, Larry Hot commented and asked about 
No Man's Sky, which I answered earlier. Right. He did comment on the seven minutes of our deep tongue kissing at the end of yep, the last yep. episode. He said a similar thing on Twitter. I told him to remind me to uh, make sure that we got a shout out in there. Um, I say don't shit on our artistic vision. Yes. Larry, who do you think you are? Kapow, the pop cultured podcast, another yeah. local podcast, and also our sworn podcast nemesis. Uh, <laughs> oh, wait, said, is that a thing now? Yes. <laughs> okay. I'm declaring that they are our sworn podcast nemesis. But we'll still be friends and hang out and, you know, invite each other to do shows. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they said, thanks for being a part of our virgin, yep. which out of context sounds very horrible. So on the podcast, I'm not going to explain the context. Uh, uh, yep. You have to go back and listen to the other one. Uh, MK Easton said, Hulk Vereen would smash Magneto. He would try to mess with Hulk Vereen, but he would make him angry, and you know what happens next. I'm not sure what happens next. If you could elaborate, I would appreciate that. <laughs> uh, and then Terry Viscount, Terry W. Urban II, said, how do podcasters vote? Voice vote. <laughs> Speaking of Terry, uh, I have I finally gotten around to listening to Flank Hawk. Mm-hmm. I said, you know, I, I'm still not finding the time that I need to fall out of the chair, Brandon. Jesus. <laughs> it scared me. It leaned back really far. <laughs> um, I still hadn't found the time to actually crack open the book and read it, but I have been listening to Flying Hawk through Audible. Uh, if you want, you can try your 30-day free trial. Audible, two free audiobooks. Click in the link in the description down there. I'll have that set up there for you. So Are we linking to Audible now? Huh? Yeah. Are we on Big Audible's payroll? Yeah, we can be. Well, it's owned by Amazon, so yeah. All right. Yeah, we offer, uh, you know, the website says that we have to state that we offer affiliate links, so it's an affiliate link. Man, Audible really puts out to a lot of people. Yeah. Everybody ever is connected to Audible. Right. So click on the link description below. You could... Uh, Sorry, you I could, shouldn't be shitting on the Audible thing. Yeah. <laughs> you could uh, get two free audiobooks. Um, I, I signed up and, and bought... Terry's so which ones did you get flank hawk and relic tech flank hawk and whichever one comes after flank hawk I, I still blood sword blood I mean sword, yeah yeah blood sword and his books are narrated by um ice tea aren't they <laughs> no no they're not they're not at all narrated by ice tea although ice Cube? I kind of wish they were now I mean this guy <laughs> does a this guy does a good job uh, he's very enjoyable to listen to, I think. Uh, narrated by Michael A. Slusser. So Slusser. Slusser. Or Slusser. Maybe it's it's probably Slusser. If I were to hazard a guess. That's a rough name. So uh <laughs> yeah, no, Michael Michael does a very good job. Um I'm enjoying his take on the characters. And and you know, vo- even even reading a book, voice actors, voiceover artists, however you want to refer to them. You can take an article or a story and make it really boring by reading it. You know, you have to have the proper inflections. You have to read ahead and know what you're getting into. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's that's all very important. There's a certain art to it. And, uh, you know, he's got a good handle on that. And I've enjoyed listening to him read the book that I have been wanting to read. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, Terry, I, I'm I'm really enjoying Flank Hawk. I'm speaking to you directly right now. Um, I can't wait to get started, finish it up, and get started on the next ones. I'm on chapter 29 right now. Oh wow! So yeah, I mean, I got it two days ago. <laughs> so if that tells you anything, every chance that I get, I have been listening to it. That's awesome. Yeah. So I'm I'm really excited. I wonder if I'm allowed to. Am I allowed to give a little? No, I don't want to. I don't want to do that. I was gonna, I was gonna let it play over the uh, the mic, but no, we'll skip that. Yeah, I don't think I, that's really pushing the boundaries of shit that I would be allowed to do legally. Yeah, <laughs> so, it's really pushing the boundaries of a lot of things. Yeah, so I won't. But uh, you know, if you want to get your free copies, or um, Stephen Hines's biography is available on Audible, I think now as mm-hmm. well, uh, or any other books, pretty much that you have had an eye on, and if you haven't given. An audio book, The College Try, because I honestly wasn't sure I was going to like it. I really wasn't. Uh, it was a little hard for me to start off with. Why is that? It was just, it was hard for me to focus on that and still try to do other things. Okay. You know, because that's the reason why I'm listening to audio books is so I can do other things. That's Otherwise, I'd be sitting there with a book and reading it, right? Yeah. So it was a little difficult for me to keep focus initially, but once I really started getting into the story... It was a lot easier for me to pay attention to the story and just mindlessly do the other things I needed to do. Okay. So 
Give it a try. Click on the link down below. Do you have anything else you want to add? Nope. <laughs> good, good. No, I do not. All right. So if you have any questions, comments, or you'd like to hear yourself on air, you can call us at 978-DU-OGRES. That's 978-386-4737. If you'd like to win a copy of Flank Hawk, a physical copy signed by Viscount Terry Irvin II, uh, you can give us a call because that contest is still going on. Nobody called in. So uh, shame on all of you for not doing that. Yeah, shame them. Shame them. Shame on all of you for not calling in. I think a lot of the people that ha- that listen to us frequently have <laughs> already Terry's yeah. book. So <laughs> I guess that's fair. Um, but yeah, if you don't, you like like I said, I, I've been listening to it. It's really awesome. Um, I'm really enjoying it. It almost makes me want to listen to it again and read along as well. Really? Yeah. Like, I kind of want to do that just so I'm getting it from two ends of my mind spectrum. You're really just soaking in. Yeah, exactly. I think that would be neat to give a try anyway. Uh, so if you'd like to win a physical copy that is signed by Terry Irvin II, you can give us a call at 978-DU-OGRES, like I said, uh, and you'll just comment on whatever you want to comment on that you listen to in the episode and then say, hey, I'm commenting on this so i can try and win terry's book here's my email let's hook up yes and that's what we'll do you can also reach us on twitter at dueling errors email us at dueling errors at gmail.com or leave a comment on the facebook page make sure to check out our website at dueling errors.com for articles pertaining to some of your favorite geek news finally be sure to leave us a five-star review on itunes find us on youtube iHeartRadio, radio satchel where you can donate to the show or nearly anywhere else you can find a podcast Jesus, how was that that was fast yeah i've been practicing my my uh voiceover artist stuff myself you know, I'm going to read all of those. That's how you're going to read the books? <laughs> well, no, I'm not going to read the books that way, but that's how I'm going to read the uh, the legal stuff down at the bottom. Okay. You know, contest is subject to change. What happens when Fire Breathing Dragons... But I can't even do it. See, here. Yeah. What happens when... <laughs> Wait, I got to do it. You got one. You got one. You get one. Just one? I only get one chance? What happens when Fire Breathing Dragons battles Dukas for aerial supremacy over a battlefield? Can unearth wizard's magic defeat the Panzer? Kirish farmhand turn mercenary witnesses this and much more as he confronts the Necromancer King's new war machines resurrected from the f- before the first civilization's fall? Yeah, I'm, I'm done. Yeah, you already fucked Yeah, I'm going to cut half I've, of that. Out. I feel like I was really generous with the second chance. Uh-huh. <laughs> there's, there's that book. See, now you can get that book that has been thrown into Brandon. Yeah, he just threw it into my stomach slash crotch crotch your region my slatch you're s- <laughs> you're the worst that uh, was uh, that was so until next week ogres keep your clubs blunt and your slatch sharp <laughs> good, good night, night. <laughs> <laughs> this is the worst podcast ever slatch sounds so gross <laughs> and i mean nothing it sounds so much worse than snatch it's not it's not related to snatch no. the thing is slatch means nothing no it means it's just in the context of like you throw a book into my slatch Was that like to the tune of Eye of the Tiger? No, it wasn't to the tune of anything. Oh. I agree. I should find more. Because my news is so barren. Bow, bow, bow. Good for me. I have RSS feeds that we can scour for good news. Oh, there's a bob in here. It's the bob of the tiger. It's the bob of the fight. Rising up to the bobby bob 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 bob
Oh, not major character. I love that guy. <laughs> but he's not dead because they made they turned him into an admiral. Like yeah, original. now he's admiral character. Admiral character. Admiral character. We need you on the starship exposition. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <laughs> That's good. Oh, it's 108. It's 108. Ring, 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 ring. Banana phone. My cellular. Bananular phone. Hello, Ogres, and welcome to episode 108. Thank you for always. Thank you for. <laughs> <laughs> I realized halfway through the sentence that I didn't pick a new adjective. <laughs> Thank you for always. Thank you for always loving us. Thank you for always joining us. <laughs> and most importantly, thank you for being a friend. Travel down the road and back again. No, we're not doing that. Oh. We are not doing. I need an adjective. The random. Golden Doyles. <laughs> I need an adjective. Golden Girls. That's not an adjective. It's <laughs> a noun. Um, golden Girling. <laughs> I'm going to go with Weld Bonded because that's what's on my desk. Okay. You're going golden girling. No, I'm going weld bonded. That's when you uh, go out with your friends and try to fuck the guy from Empty Nest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's perfect. Okay. Uh, narrated by Michael A. Sluice. Uh, narrated. <laughs> Shut up. Your mouth is just forgetting how to do words now. <laughs> do some more tongue exercises. <laughs> 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 